Welcome back, heroes, to some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. Last episode, we finished off Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Whew, man, 5Ds, the end of the story is so good, man. Got Shu and Quasar dragging out. I mean, we lost that duel, but I managed to get it out, which is just good enough for me, and then um, went back and destroyed zone. Now we're going to start Yu-Gi-Oh! Zeal, which um, I probably know the cards best from this season, or remember most of them anyway, because uh, X-Season was probably my favourite, like, Mechanic introduced into Yu-Gi-Oh, but when we get to Arc 5, we're going to absolutely know nothing. I know what the character looks like, and then, uh, I think it's pronounced v Reigns, right? You don't pronounce the V, just, uh, whatever that is. Uh, <laughs> I honestly have absolutely no idea about this. But anyway, yeah. Let's start Zeal. So, go with the flow. We've got Yuma vs. Shark. So, now loading at Zeal Histories. Yuma... I have no idea how you pronounce his last name. Story begins on a day like any other at Heartland City's at local middle school. It was there that he came across his friend Bronk Duel and Shark, the school bully. Shark was a powerful duelist and a master of XC summons. Ah! Thanks for the duel, and for your deck. Not so fast. Who are you? My name's Yuma, and I'm Bronk's good friend. Bronk and I had an arrangement. Whoever won got the other duel's deck. Is that true? It is. But I had to do it. He called me a big chicken. Fine then. If you're going to challenge my friend, then I'm going to challenge you. If you beat me, I'll give back his deck. But if I win, Yuma, I get your deck. And on that Sunday, Yuma kept his word and faced off against Shark. Hope you said your goodbyes because all your cards are about to be mine. Sorry, but the only thing that you're going to be getting is a good old fashioned butt kicking. When I win your dual deck, I'm going to trash it. Then maybe you'll learn your lesson. Don't pick fights you can't win. That's where you're wrong, Shark. I'll never learn that lesson. I'll keep trying to high five the sky because when you're feeling the flow, there's no going back. And speaking of feeling the flow, I so am. It was then that the golden key necklace around Yuma's neck, gifted to him by his missing parents, released something that would change his life forever. Through the key, Yuma's courage released a being from an unknown realm, a being that only he could see and hear. I think if I remember correctly, because I only saw like the first like 20 odd episodes when they were actually getting released week by week for Pokemon Zeal, I think Yuma lives with his sister and his grandma, right? And I think his like parents were archaeologists or something. But uh, yeah. Who are you? Hey. Can you talk? I don't remember Astral looking like that, but maybe it's just like the, you know, the still image, but... Hey, say something already. Astral. Huh, what's an Astral? My name if I recall, but I do not recall much of anything. Oh, great. What do I do with this walking flashlight right before my most important duel ever? Duel? That word is familiar to me. Yes, I recall that I know how to duel. Observe. Hey. I remember liking Astral. But, uh, okay, we got the um, tutorial match. Okay, it's going to tell us how to exceed summon. Number 20, Giga Brilliant. Uh, oh, Crane Crane. Oh, I think I sold it. I had a misprinted Crane Crane. I think it was a common misprint. It was at the, um, what was it, the, uh, I can't remember the actual name, the Gold Series. Was it just called Gold Series? You know, it had like a, um, a place out of Crane Cranes and the name, you know, the Crane Crane at the top was actually misprinted a little bit out of the text box. It was pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, what are we doing? So, um, let's get started first. We need to summon monsters in, uh, in play to exceed summon. Okay, gotta set you in defense. Okay, well, I'm gonna see what we've got in our uh, extra deck. And well, let me check. Okay. Ah, oh, man. Well, the tutorials are fine and all, but I don't like the fact they literally tell you, like, they, they force you to play a certain way, which is fine, but once you can kind of, like, explore a little bit yourself. Uh, so Shark will have, uh, was it, number 17 Leviathan Dragon? I think it's 2,000 attack. Detach one material per turn. Gets 2,000, yeah, 500, so we get 2,500. We cannot attack the opponent directly, Hey. Oh, the animation for Xyz Summon is pretty cool. Nice. Oh, it's got an animation? Uh, hey. Pretty cool. Holy smokes! <laughs> oh wait, it gets extra attack because of, I guess, the field spell or is the continuous spell? I'll check in a sec if it game lets me. It's got Monster Reborn, nice, and you got Gravity Bind, which I remember like when the um, the Xyz cards first came out, everyone was trying to get Gravity Binds because obviously Xyz's aren't levels, they're ranks. So that doesn't affect him. 
So this is, uh, you can special summon one level four or low monster from your hand, okay. And that's just to yeah, increase the attack. Got zero defense though. Oh, it has zero defense anyway. Right, so you want me to select Crane Crane? Crane Crane! <laughs> uh, yep. Select yes. Get Des Koala. Alright, attack position. And then what? Oh, oh, dude, Invoker. I sold my Invoker. Like I had um, was when I I had it for wind ups, but when I quit the game, I think everyone was playing Invoker for for a certain deck recently. And I, re I remember watching my friend's YouTube video, did a deck profile, and was like, okay, Invoker. I was like, oh, people are playing Invoker again. And how much is worth on eBay? It was going for like fifty quid. So I was like, putting that on eBay, and I got quite a bit of money for it. But I, I wish I kind of kept it though, because Invoker was kind of good. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's a good thing about like Yu Gi Oh cards. Like, sometimes, like, when a card becomes just worthless, give it like a year or so, and then eventually it'll become really good in another, um, another deck. And everyone wants it. Right, so, okay, so once per turn, you can detach one material from this card, special summon one level 4 or, or level 4 Earth Warrior or Beast Warrior monster from your deck in defense position. So, I think I used to get. Rat? Wind up rat with this? No. Was that Earth? I forgot the combo, man. It's been way too long. And then you want me to get throw stone unit. And then we are going to activate the effect. Gonna tribute this. No, my invoker! Let us roll the Viathan. Hey. Okay, and then we're gonna bring this back. Damn, pretty good combo we got going here. Okay, and then activate the effect. Detach that. Get another level four. I'm guessing we're gonna make a Utopia. Uh, show card list. Hey, there you go. Oh, it's just free Invoker and free Utopia. Alright. Overlaying, so cool! Dude, it's like, it's like, just overlaying right now, this like, doing this door is bringing back so many memories and ooh! Oh, that's a pretty cool animation. Like, when like, Xyz first came out, because when I got back into Yu-Gi-Oh, Synchros had been out for like, a couple of months, you know, so it wasn't really, like everyone knew how to play them and stuff, and obviously the decks were established, but with, um, Xyz summoning, I was there when the first, like, decks came out, the first, like, set, and it's just, it brings up so many memories, dude. So many memories. Oh, you want to do Utopia? Oh, damn, okay. Gonna be going in, I guess, then reborn Utopia. Makes sense. And we're going for game here. I think we might be. Got the cool animation again. I'm guessing there's got to be an animation for um, Galaxy. Is it Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon? And quick to you. Alright, so advance the battle phase and attack with your, with your Xyz monsters. Hey, boy! Now everything can attack. 2, 5, 3, 7, and 1, 6. Woo! Alright, cool. I wonder what the next door is going to be. So after the duel, Yuma learned his new friend had some sort of affinity with these new number cards. This number card represents a piece of my memory, which is a small piece. For my memory to truly return, I must collect all 100 number cards. In the anime, does he ever get like all 100 and regain his memory? Like, I have no idea what happens in Zeal, but I guess we'll find out through this game. But we did a deal, so here's Bronx deck back. Thank you for keeping your word. You're a good duelist. I'll see you around. Hey, perhaps we can do this again sometime. And if you get the decks, let's just duel for good old fashioned fun. That's the best way to fill the flow. Alright. 
Alright, so flipping out. Ooh. No idea who this kid is, but through Astral's guidance, Yuma's dueling abilities increased. However, his new success only attracted new duelists, focused on winning Yuma's numbers cards. One such competitor was Flip Turner. <laughs> Do not remember him, and when Flip found that Yuma had more than one number card, his focus became even clearer. Because there are a bunch of other numbers, all the more for me to snatch up. What is it with you? Why do you gotta be so mean all the time, Flip? I'm not mean, the world is. Now learn it the hard way, Yuma. Do you know how many times my so-called friends tricked me out of my cards? That's when I realized that there was always something going on on the flip side. So I took advantage. My enemies would pretend to be nice, but were truly mean. I would pretend to be fair, but would truly cheat. Without fail, it always worked. I won everything, including duels where, where winning matters the most. That's why you're wrong, Flip. Duel is not just about winning. It's about having fun and doing the best you can do. Wait, isn't this the duel where they have in the um the the shopping mall? I think. I don't think it's the um like the ant virus dude. All right, so we're trying this duel again. One word, or well, two words, messenger or three words, messenger of peace. Dude, that card. He just has flip effects. Burnt me. I couldn't attack him, I couldn't do anything. Like, and when I actually got like a setup ready to actually start doing damage to him, he just used Dark Hole. I was so tilted. So tilted. And, okay, type one monster on the field this turn. That monster cannot be destroyed in battle. What's any battle damage you take from a card? It's halved. Okay, um. Right, what shall we do? I am going to get you. And then I am going to get this dude ready for when he gets messed through a piece. So we're going to normal summon you. Alright. Already off to a better start than before. Last time, I never got Utopia. I could, oh, even if I got Utopia out, it wouldn't matter anyway because Master of Peace. Dude, that card was just so just triggering. Like I hate I hate decks basically say you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. You just sit there and you wait for me to win. Those are the worst kind of decks in Yu-Gi-Oh, and he has one. So annoying. Right, so we're gonna attack you now. Please don't be Tubone or okay. Still annoying. This is gone now. All right, end turn. Ooh, please don't go mess your piece. I want to try and beat him before he actually gets out. I feel like I feel like, yeah, I feel like he already has it. I feel like he probably has three of these in his deck. Because it's just super annoying, but... Right, so what we're going to do... Is I'm going to get ready... To destroy him. Like... I'm going to get... I've got this. Swordsman and the armor. I'm just going to get ready. So when it's time... Attack him directly. Mr. Piece goes back to his hand, and then we're just going to go... In. Destroy all his monsters, attack him directly... Oh, okay. Okay, it's just draw one card, that's fine. Okay, so I don't know why you're not doing that, but... Okay, 600 defense, I remember that. Ooh, we've got two of them now? Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Right, so if we... Got Utopia to block two attacks. So I can potentially just do it now. All good. Right, so battle phase. Attack directly. Messier piece goes back to hand. And we know we can take out this stupid camel. It's gonna get every, annoying every like attack. Do you want to use your Toby's effect? No, I don't. Do you want to use his own effect? No. Oh man. Alright. 
Actually, I'm I'm happy now. Blast door, when you let him get set up and you draw like nothing good, it's just this door is the worst. But now it's just like, yo. This is this is okay. Okay. That's fine, mate. Don't mind that. Oh, hello. Uh I know he's got Dark Hole, so I'm just going to hold on to this for now. Because I know he's got Dark Hole, and I don't fancy getting, like, blown out again, if I'm honest. Right. Back up. I know he's got this, like, defense monster with, like... Well, he's got Dez Koala, and he's got something that's 1,700. I'm going to attack with Utopia, just in case it's one of them. Don't hit my Rider Dude. Okay, that's... Oh, no. Can't attack. Because if he activates the effect... That's one less effect for me. At least it goes back. I didn't realize it goes back there. That's that's interesting. Cool. I thought to go back to the um, extra deck zone, but we can now make more extra deck monsters. This is good. What have we got? What have we got? We got a oh Gaga -ga -ga magician. I do like Gaga -ga magician. I think it's like my all my rare one. Dude, I think one of the best cards that like I loved playing was uh Go 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 Cowboy. It's just like, okay, like the amount of times you you just finish someone off by burning them for 800. So good. Right anyway, um let's go battle phase. Attack you directly. Stupid flip turner. Do not like him. Oh, I've got to show you guys the extra deck as well. Um yeah, we got Terabyte, which I think was the one used for the um, the virus deck I'm thinking of. I think it's like they have a continuous spell called Virus Mail. We got number 17, and then we got these uh, Tigons, which is three level ones, and then you have to um, detach one and level one attack, attack directly. The only thing is, I thought I could maybe win, but obviously he can't target himself because he's a rank and not a level. But uh, yeah, but now we're going to... Uh, Attack with Utopia, because I don't know what you are. Okay, and then 1 5. Oh, you're the worst kind of person. Oh, it's level 3. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Dude, this dude is just stall, 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 and burn you. Like, just want to ban him, you know? If I was a jug judge in Yu-Gi-Oh! and I go to like a, a YCS and I'm judging it, and I see someone using a deck like this, I'm like, mate, I'm sorry, you have to leave. Why? <laughs> Your deck sucks. <laughs> I hate it. But I just realized we can now make another Utopia. Which, wait, do we have two? Oh no, I think of the other door, we had three Utopias. Oh, that sucks. Uh, it doesn't matter though. Right, so we are now going to attack directly. Uh, yes. And then, ooh, good. And then we can go. Of course, all um, face up spell and trap. I thought it was just um, just one. But it's all good. I wish that gardener thing wasn't the field now. <laughs> Honestly, if I had two Utopias in the deck. Oh, it'd be so good if we did. Because I think that would have been game, right? Oh, no, we, we, we would have had 100 life points left if we had a um, chance to get another Utopia out. Oh, flip Turner, this is so satisfying from last duel. Like, I'm kind of glad I lost because that duel was so boring. I was worried that you guys would just like be so bored because I, I honestly think there was nothing I could have done to speed that up and it was like 30 turns it was just me just going okay can't attack yet waiting for something waiting for something and then finally right if I go actually if I attack oh no I got attack with this first haven't I that's annoying because now he's going to use gravity bind But actually, it doesn't matter because we can still finish him off. Oh, 
Oh no, I'll lose 500 attack. It's all good, because now we win. Yay! Ah, oh, Flip Turner, never wanna... Never wanna do you ever again. Yeah, that's how you flow. All my tricks and I still lost. You have my respect the right way, by not cheating. That's gotta feel good inside, doesn't it? I'm turning over a new leaf right now. Please, start by burning your deck, because it's the worst. The Sparrow, ooh. Okay. Astral found himself becoming more and more inclined to this uh, new world that he found himself in. Wait, the Sparrow, isn't it like um some actor dude? I think I remember this, yeah. Oh, dude, actually, it's kind of cool. With the face mask. And as a part of that, he became addicted to the enthralling action of the hit TV show starring the Sparrow. He identified with the lead character who was also from another world. Not understanding TV, he encouraged Yuma to seek out the Sparrow's help, but Yuma was not hearing it. However, the next day at school, his friend Tori brought him some news. Hey Yuma, did you hear? The Sparrow is down by the seaport, they built a set down on South Street. We cannot squander this opportunity, Yuma. If the Sparrow really arrived here for a dimensional vortex, there's a chance that he might know something about me and my missing memories. I think I actually remember this, like, Astral was like super, like, just pumped up to see him. Oh man, Astral truly thought the Sparrow might hold the key to his lost memories. While Tori wanted to indulge her school schoolgirl crush, Esa Yuma reluctantly agreed to try and see the Sparrow. It wasn't long before they found themselves sneaking onto the TV show set and taking a peek at the Sparrow. Unfortunately, due to a mishap, Yuma and his friends were discovered. In the process, Yuma dropped his dual deck. As security guards escorted him out, uh, the Sparrow suddenly descended from nowhere and re rescued Yuma. Is this deck yours? Because I know it isn't mine. I must have dropped it, thanks. No need to thank me, although I do have a small request. What is it? Well, I would like to challenge you to a lavish duel. Awesome. You'd like to duel? Well, I'm not saving the universe, yes. What would you say we duel right now, Sparrow? You really mean it? Great. By the way, my real name's Nelson. Nelson was excited to duel with a friend. Unfortunately, Nelson's mother interrupted the two and escorted Yuma out. Oh, oh, I... Is it Galaxy Queen, I think that is? That night, yeah, uh, on the deck of, of his hotel room, Nelson came across a mysterious number card. Number 83, Galaxy Queen. When he picked it up, it overcame him, possessing him, making him believe he really was the Sparrow. Soon, Yuma and Tori heard reports of the Sparrow running amok through the city. Tori grabbed Yuma and ran to the streets in search of the Sparrow. Uh, what are we doing now here, Tori? We're out here to prove the Sparrow's innocence. Uh, tying random people up and flipping over cars? The Sparrow would never do such uh, stuff like that. It wasn't long before Yuma and Tori came across Nelson, lurking the streets in the dead of the night. Nelson, why are you going around attacking people dressed up like the Sparrow? I fulfilled my duty to the Galaxy Queen. I swore to defeat the Dark Emperor, Furious Max, and his minions. As for you, why have you come here? Has the Dark Emperor managed to sink his claws into you as well? Step out of it, Nelson. If you're aligned with the Dark Emperor, then I have no choice but to battle you. If you want to battle, I challenge you to a duel. Hey. I think Galaxy Queen's level, or well, rank 1, isn't she? Can't remember what deck he uses, but... Hopefully we can beat him. Second to go, okay. Alright. Let's see what you got then, dude. Oh, we're going first? Oh man, I thought he was going first. I was like, what are you, what are you doing, mate? Okay, we've got, now we've got two Utopias, which is good. Uh, what is this card? Is it normal song flip song? Flip damage? Okay, um... Gonna summon you to start off with then. And set MST. He's got one card in his extra deck, and that's gotta be Galaxy Queen. Honestly, cannot remember what Galaxy Queen does, but I feel like it's three level one, so it won't be too easy for him to get it out. And I think we can instantly destroy that with the effect. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Wait, that's fine, it's fine. Got MST. Now it's face-up defense position anyway. Ugh. Ooh, tornado, okay. Uh Right, so let's set this. Summon this. Effect 500, why not? And let's make Leviathan Dragon. I think I got my Leviathan Dragon out of a tin. Or I might have an ultra rare one. I, can't, I think I still have my Leviathan Dragon. Oh, dude. 
later on, I'm going to do like a video just going over all my Yu-Gi-Oh cards so you guys can see. I've got some old ones, man. And I'm kind of curious to see myself because I cannot remember everything I have. Uh, yeah, let's just go for a nice MST right now. Get rid of that swords. And obviously, got a detach one. And then attack. Problem is we can't attack directly though. Oh, Kunawa Chain, seriously? Ah. Uh, that's actually really bad. That's really bad for us. Oh, snap. Oh, not good, not good, not good. Oh, the boys! It's the boys! I remember this. I think that was a secret rare, right? I remember my, my friend getting it and we just used to like just always go, the boys! Oh, what? Okay. Oh, snap. 3,500. Oh, sweet. This is gonna be painful. Great. And attack me for 100. <laughs> Why not? Alright, if you control DD, Esper, Star Sparrow, Beast Warrior, Puma, and. Okay, you don't. Uh, it cannot change its battle position. Once per turn, you can target one monster your opponent controls. You can attack your opponent directly. Okay, that's fine. So, um. I guess we just go Gaga Magician to take it out. Battle phase. And. Attack you. Okay, so this card, yeah. That's it, can it target like a different monster to change his level? But it cannot. That Du Bois is so good in defense mode. I'm surprised he didn't get Galaxy Queen out. I guess because that card was in his hand, it made him do that instead. Oh, there's the Puma. Ouch. Okay, um... Okay. Thousand attack. That'll do. Kill that. Get your 500. And go for this. Dude, like, I hate burning people. It's just. I feel, it feels so cheap, you know? Never forget, like, the first um, Nats I went to. Played some dude and he tried burning me. He was like, okay, game two. I was like, cited my free royal decrees. And I was like, it's like, do this like Royal Decree. He was like, okay. And I was like, next time, game. And then game three, same again. I'm like, boy. Don't like burn. Not cool. It's not cool, man. Ooh, what's this? So target one face-up monster you control, equip this card to that target. If your opponent controls a monster with higher attack than the same target's original attack, the attack of the equipped monster becomes double the equipped monster's original attack. During the damage to burn it, okay. Right, so I'm gonna summon this dude. And I am gonna kill the boys. I feel like he's not getting Galaxy Queen out this uh this game. I feel like the boys was like his uh his one shot and now it's just yeah. It ain't happening. I'm pretty sure I set that trap to be fair. That would have been smart. Oh, kinda glad I didn't now. Let's see if we can take you out. Oh, easy. Attack 300 and set this an end. Alright, we are looking looking pretty good right now. I don't know if he summons a monster with... I don't know, we'll be fine actually. I doubt we have something with like 1,800 more defense or 1,700 defense or more. I think we're looking okay. If I still have that trap card just destroys all my monsters, I ain't gonna be happy. Alright, I'm gonna um, keep that in hand for now. Just while I attack. Nice. 
<laughs> oh, wait. No! That sucks. Uh, so, if I could enter him, monster with higher attack than the same monster's original attack, the attack of the equipped monster becomes double the equipped monster's original attack. So that's not going to really help, is it? Just set this and go. Okay, probably taking my little dude. Yeah, I don't blame you. It's all good though, it's all good. Next turn, you getting killed. Oh, Wabaku, nice. Alright, battle phase and... Don't think that would kill it. No, it wouldn't be game, would it? Let's take it out on the next turn, do that. We'll be fine. I don't think there's any way he's gonna beat me. If I can draw like a level four right now, I'd be so happy. Make Utopia, and then we win. Ooh, nice. All right, let's do this. Utopia time. Right, I'm gonna attack with my 1,700 monster just so I think I could take it out and then finish off with Utopia. That is the plan. Please say I can. Hey! And now we win. You didn't even get your like Galaxy Queen out. I have no idea what Galaxy Queen does, can't remember, but anyway. With the, defeated, with the defeat of the Sparrow, Yuma won the number 83 Galaxy Queen card, and Nelson returned to being himself. The number card unlocked yet another of Astral's memories. Now remember the moment I was born. The moment I was named Astral. I was entrusted with the future of my world. Hey. Ooh. Signature card, DD Esper Star Sparrow. Ooh. Oh, the feline frenzy. I remember the little Catwoman, kind of. Right. So one of Yuma's classmates, uh, Kathy Catherine, <laughs> grew jealous of the special relationship that Tori and Yuma seemed to possess. It was this jealousy that drove her to command her army of cats to remove Tori from the picture. My friends, you're the... <laughs> she looks so funny. You're only ones that care about me, and now I need your help. I need you to deal with an annoying little mouse. This mouse has things I don't have. She has friends. Oh, that's depressing. Uh, one friend in particular. It's not fair. She makes me a sad kitten. We don't like her, do we? I want you to find this little mouse, and when you do, I want you to pounce. The army of cats found Tori and surrounded her. Uh, nice kitties. Elsewhere, a cat delivered a note to Yuma. We have your friend. Follow us to get her back. After catnap and Tori, the frisky fel uh, felines led Yuma to Kathy Catherine. Thank you for coming, Yuma. Who are you? I'm Kathy Catherine. You can just call me Cat. What are you done with Tori? Tori, Tori, Tori. Is, this, is she all you think about? No, I think about lots of stuff, but ah, whatever. Just let her go. No need to defeat me in a duel. You're not a scaredy cat, are you? Astral, I think she's got a number card. If she does a number, then you have to win this duel. That's plan on winning either way. Let's do this. What number card does she has? Because I do not remember. Do you know I mean? like a cat number, but... I'm sure it'll come to me soon. Okay. I'm assuming we put a Galaxy Queen in our deck now. Oh, she uses Fables? I have not seen any cards in so long. Oh, we don't have Galaxy Queen. Oh, that sucks. Um, 
Okay, so what do you do? When this card is discarded to the graveyard, select one face-up card in the field and destroy it. Okay, it's not discarded, so it's fine. Uh... So... Just summon Gargaga and attack it? Well, it's just like a normal play uh, spell card there, but do that, but it's fine. Right, and now I'm just gonna uh, about to say set, just activate swords and then end my turn. Got three level ones, man. Gotta make some rank ones. Alright, no swallow trap, that's great. Of a sword, great. Uh, some of this dude. And we're attack. And attack for three hundred. And that will be our intern. Right, so we can make a rank one now. So if we go uh, special summon, normal summon. Oh, I just thought something we can maybe do. I think this works. There's probably no point in doing it, but I'm gonna do it anyway just because might as well. <laughs> uh, actually, I'll, I'll wait a little bit longer. I was gonna like activate Gargoyle's effect, make him level one, then activate the effect of the Xyz, just attack directly. Oh, if she doesn't have like, was it Rescue Cat? It's gonna be like so upsetting. <laughs> it's like the card she needs to have on her team, man. Cool. And swords is gone, but we can't find another one, so it's all good. So what is this? Oh, cool. <laughs> This is a really easy duel. I guess she must have bricked really hard. Pretty sure the set called the Hornet, but she ain't gonna kill me, is she? Unless she goes like Dark Hole or something, that would be really annoying. I feel kind of bad for her though. Double call, great. Uh, if we go, there's no point in this attack. Oh, okay. Seems like it's gonna be kind of annoying, but it's all good. I think it was just so easy, like I wanted to do something like kind of interesting, but I don't think she is. Lock cat, okay. Alright, so you got that. You got a tuna, you got like a level 4 right there. Oh, tribute in Oh, sinking. Underworld fighter Bolmong. I don't remember this, but this card is drawn about uh, straw by a card effect and sent to the Gregory type 1 level 4 lower monster. So, okay, it's fine. <laughs> Don't mind. Um, it's kind of easy. Just gonna activate the effect. Level one. Activate the effect. Uh, 
and attack directly. Mm, it shouldn't activate it yet. Be silly. I mean, kind of funny to do it. Uh, and you attack. And attack for 900. And next turn we'll just add the effect again. Can I do it once per turn or just once? Yeah, once per turn, cool. End phase, I'll just do it again. <laughs> oh man. Well, that's been one super easy duel. She got absolutely wrecked, son. So she goes like mirror force and I get really sad. Alright, make him level one. Now that I've seen Naruto, Gagagara really reminds me of Kakashi a little bit. I think it's just like the hair and the face. Wait, what? During your main phase one, you can attach one exes, okay. Why can't I? It's level one now, why can't I activate it? What did I do wrong? I don't know, but uh, either way, I'm just gonna go attack and win then. Oh, I already did it. Wait, what? Oh, is it all the time? Oh, I thought it was like once per turn. Oh, sweet. Oh, nice. I said, why isn't it working? And then it just turns out it's forever. Nice, okay. <laughs> Shut up, but that's a number card. A deal's a deal. This is the part where you tell me where, the, where Tori is, cat. Alright, Yuma. When Yuma found Tori, she was just playing with the armor of cats in the park, completely unharmed. The cats want me to play with them, and they were so cute. I couldn't refuse. Just lost track of time. Trouble always seemed to follow Yuma, and the trouble always seemed to uh, revolve around the number cards. Oh, uh, Kite suddenly appeared out of nowhere. He was a number hunter who hunted anyone that possessed a number card, like Yuma. Kite immediately activated a dual field that slowed time. Only people with numbers can move freely in this field. That's how I uh, know you have a number. From here on out, you're stuck, in, you're stuck to this field. Great. Yes, it is, because now you have no choice. You and I will duel for numbers. Well, get set to get decked. You're going down, number hunter. Yuma, the, the duel we're about to have is not for fun and games. The stakes have never been higher. Meanwhile, an, a man named Dr. Faker and Kite's brother hearts life energy to attack Astral's world. However, Kite was unaware of Dr. Faker's ploy. Oh, wow, that's the yeah, it's brother now. Yes, yeah, it's all working. The energy's flowing. Well done, heart. It just screams evil. Look at the veins on his head, man. Ugh. Make Astral world pay. Make them pay with your power. You're doing great, Heart. Use your power. Use all you can. The power is becoming too much to handle. Big brother. Can you feel the crush defeat closing in? He has out outdoored us both. Oh, man, I, I want to do this duel. Because, like, yeah, Kite beats him, doesn't he? Is this it? I'm afraid so. Farewell. Incoming message. Master Kite, Heart's in trouble. Heart? We'll finish this later, but now I must leave. Yeah, and the duel gets, like, stopped. And then, like, time... Starts again, it's like raining in the street, Yuma's like, I think he's screaming or starts crying, and then I think Tori's there as well. Yeah, I definitely remember that. Ooh. I'm gonna play as like, what's his name, Bronk first? Maybe Astral? I have no idea what's next, but um... Yeah. I think I've definitely seen a few more episodes then. But I'll catch you guys next time. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Peace.